and I feel like throwing in the towel. I feel like, you know, just stopping ministry. I don't feel like going on. There's been many moments of tears and pain and moments where no camera sees, you know, where you're just sitting with the Lord and you're like, Lord, what is happening? <laughs> This is my first video back to YouTube since like, I don't know, some day in 2023. And so now it's January of 2024 and I'm relaunching my channel, which I'm so excited about. Y'all, 2023, if I have to be completely honest, was a year. It felt like a movie. There was so much that happened, so much transition, grief, loss, pain, suffering. A lot of things that I was walking through behind the scenes with leaders and family and friends and just accountability in my life. Many of you may have saw that my best friend passed away in the summer of 2023. It was like the beginning of summer. And so it was just a lot. I was walking through a lot. And I know a lot of you guys were a part of a lot of the videos that we were posting. And so I know it's got to be hard. And I know a lot of people are asking what happened, what's the full story. And I totally understand that. And I eventually want to share the full story. I'm just waiting on the timing of the Lord. And I believe that day will come, but I'm not sure when or when it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. <laughs> if you guys could be praying for Evan's family members and just all who are involved in the situation, it's really tough. And it's always tough losing a loved one. So I would really appreciate your prayers for everyone involved. There's definitely a lot that I've learned through the past year and just even taking time off to seek counseling and just rest and healing with the Lord. And so I want to share with you guys things that I learned over the past, well, it hasn't been like exactly a year yet. But I want to share with you guys what I've learned so far in the grief journey and just walking this out with the Lord and with people in my life. So to give you a quick life update, many of you guys know that we moved to North Carolina in the beginning of summer as well. So that was really hard to both lose a loved one and then also transition at the same time because it kind of messes with your brain a little bit. <laughs> it's like, whoa, like there's so many things changing at one time. And so that's why it was super helpful for me to talk to trusted people in my life and counselors and leaders for them to just help me walk through that. And most importantly, oh my goodness, the times that I've had with the Lord and just the way that I've encountered the Lord in this season has been way different than any other season. And I've gotten to see this side of God, the side of Jesus, just this comforter that I've never seen before. And it's not that I didn't know the Holy Spirit as my comforter before, but when you walk through grief and suffering like that, there is a side that you learn more than ever before. And it's just like when you are in friendship or relationship with somebody, you're always gonna continue to learn more and more about that person. And so it's the same with God. Like we're going to continue to learn more and more about him until we pass away and then spend eternity with him forever. I think it's so cool that there's so many things to the Lord that we can learn about, that we can grow in. And if you want to learn more about God, literally open your Bible, read it and just learn about the Lord. I had so many amazing friends last year when everything went down, when everything happened, reach out send me texts, phone calls, flowers, oh my goodness, gifts in the mail. I just have to say thank you so much to everyone who has reached out. And I know many of you have reached out on social media and said encouragement and prayers, especially last summer. And so that blessed my heart so much. I was not able to get back to everyone, especially with taking a break, but I'm so thankful. I will say that I'm doing way better than I was. And the summer of last year, especially going through a lot, like that was a lot. And then also the hospital experience, being in the hospital with Evan and his family, like it was a lot to go through. And so losing someone that you're so close to and that you know so well is really difficult. And I believe some of you even watching this video could be going through that same thing right now, whether it was years ago or recently, and you're just walking through this season of grief. And I hope the things that I shared today help you in the season that you're in and what you're walking through. Yeah, there's been a lot of tears, a lot of pain. Pain like I have never experienced before in my life. Last year was a literal movie. It didn't seem real. I and mean, there's so many times where I'm like, Lord, this is not real. There's no way. But I am excited to share though what the Lord taught me through all of that. And just hopefully it helps someone today here watching this video. Number one is how important it is to be rooted in your identity with Jesus knowing the word of God and being led by the Holy Spirit. Because I am so thankful that through everything that I walked through, there were so many things that happened behind the scenes. And again, one day, I hope to share the full story, but 
if I did not have Jesus, if I was not rooted in the scriptures and the word of God, which I'm so thankful for amazing parents who helped disciple me and train me growing up in the word of God and being led by the Holy Spirit, if I didn't have that, and if I didn't have those times over my life where I got into the secret place, that place where it was just me and Jesus by myself and spending time with him and getting rooted in the word of God, worshiping, praying, and just being with him. Oh my goodness. Like, I don't know what would have happened if I was not rooted in the word of God. And I think it's so important to remember that when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, when Satan came with those temptations, trying to get Jesus to fall, Jesus quoted scripture back at the enemy. And it's, basically he was like, it is written, Satan. Like, this is what the word of God says. All right. So I think that's so important for us as believers to know the scriptures so we can say, no, even though this lie is coming at me right now, this is what the word of God says. And there was times even last year where I'm like, man, I feel like throwing in the towel. I feel like, you know, just stopping ministry. I don't feel like going on. And I'm thankful for leaders who speak into my life and, you know, tell me, no, Hannah, you got to keep going with the Lord. Obviously rest, but, you know, in, especially in the future, keep going. And I'm so thankful for leaders in my life who encourage me and just encourage me in the Lord. But I literally was like, oh my goodness, like this is a lie from the enemy. And I was like, I rebuke this. Like, this is what the word of God says. And I just kept going. But, you know, in those moments where you feel like giving in to temptation or throwing in the towel, you have to know the scriptures and be led by the Holy Spirit to where you can differentiate between the truth and the lies. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, leads us into all truth and teaches us all things. And so it's so cool that the Holy Spirit can bring to remembrance. The Bible talks about this. He can bring to remembrance all that Jesus has said to us. And then we can combat those lies with truth. When the enemy tries to break in, even in your grief, even in your pain, even in your suffering, you can say, this is what the word of God says. And I'm going to stand on truth. And I'm so thankful that the truth of the word of God is what sets us free by the power of the Holy Spirit. So praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for that. I really love Matthew chapter 13 verses 18 through 23, but I really encourage you guys to go read that on your own. The verse 23 where it says this, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, in another 30. This whole passage talks about those who are rooted and they receive the word and they stay with the Lord or those who are not rooted and they don't stay with Jesus. Charles Spurgeon said this about this passage. He said, I want you to clearly understand that the fault did not lie in the suddenness of their supposed conversion. Many sudden conversions have been among the best that have ever happened. The problem was not their sudden growth, but their lack of depth. And so, because this passage talks about people falling away and not being rooted in the word of God. And again, I really encourage you guys, even when you're watching this video to pull out your Bibles, having a depth in scripture with the Holy Spirit as your teacher is so vital to make it through this life, to make it through temptation and trials and testings. Number two, the second thing that I learned is that Jesus is well acquainted with our grief. He knows your grief. He understands your grief. He was tempted at all points when he walked this earth. You know, when Jesus came to this earth, he was fully God and fully man. And so he experienced everything that we have to experience now. He experienced the loss of a loved one. And we can see that in John chapter 11, verse 28 through 37. And then I love uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Jesus endured one of the most shameful things that any person can experience walking this earth. And you know, the amount of grief that he had to feel in those moments. And so I think that's really important to remember that Jesus walked through so much suffering here on this earth and he did it selflessly. Jesus came as a servant. Can I just say that it has been an honor to suffer with Jesus? Like that sounds so crazy like to say out loud, but it's literally been such an honor. Like I know I'm smiling right now and there's been many moments of tears and pain and moments where no camera sees, you know, where you're just sitting with the Lord and you're like, Lord, what is happening? Like, no, no, no. Why? Why is this happening? But I love that Jesus literally sits with us. Like Jesus has literally wrapped his arms around me. That's like the only way I can describe it. And he literally has not let me go. And it's been such an honor 
to go through this, to suffer with him. And I love how the Bible says the testing of our faith produces steadfastness. Trials in our life, when we just put our faith in Jesus, it produces steadfastness in the Lord. And so it brings more strength and more authority in certain areas of our life. And so the next time that thing comes around, as long as you endured and had faith the first time, you're able to more easily get through that thing with the Lord because you learn and steadfastness was produced in you the first time and the first go around. The third thing that I've learned through this process, through grief and pain and suffering, is that you need accountability through it. You need shepherding. You need people to walk alongside you so you're not alone. Jesus created us for fellowship. He created us for community. The Bible talks about gathering with other believers and it's so important that we do not neglect the church. We do not neglect meeting with pastors and leaders and covering and accountability. Accountability is so important in your life. Those people who can call things out in you that you cannot see, whether it's encouraging you or whether it's even like correction, like, hey, I see this in your life. This is an area you could do better in. And you don't have to feel like you have to open up to every single person who comes to you and asks you about things. As long as you have those close friends, family, and accountability in your life, those leaders in your life, I think that's amazing and it's so important. The fourth thing that I wrote down is I believe there's two unhealthy roads that you can take within grief and crushing seasons. Number one is choosing to go, 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 nonstop being a workaholic, never taking time to grieve, lament, rest, heal, grow with the Lord, sitting with the Lord and allowing him to work in your heart and your life and to heal you. The second unhealthy option, route, road that you can take, I believe, is choosing to sit so far down into your grief for prolonged periods of time that you wallow in self-pity. And I'm reading off of here because this is a note that I've actually taken in my notes app during this process. But you actually wallow in self-pity and you rest so much that you actually become depressed, leading you to not continue on in your God-given purpose or calling. And so these two paths, these two roads, if I had to be honest, at times were not easy for me not to take either one, to either go way far into working and distracting myself or to go way far with doing absolutely nothing and just sitting with the Lord that I am actually not fulfilling my God-given mission, purpose, and calling. And so both are prideful approaches and full of self that I think is really easy for us humans to take. I pray that we all just continue to fix our eyes on Jesus through this temporary pain and know that eternity is forever. I'm actually gonna tie this in with my last point in this video, and that is I have talked about for years how short life is, but when you lose somebody so close to you, you realize, especially when they're so young like that, in their 20s, like you realize how, I mean, you just realize the reality of eternity and truly how short life is and how eternity is forever. And so many wanna live their life for this short amount of time here on this, there's like a is that a dog hair in my hand or something <laughs> but so many people want to live their life for the short amount of time on this earth they're born they die and then eternity goes on forever and then we want to live for this instead of that forever in eternity whether that's in heaven or hell and so i think when we're faced with death and loss of loved ones we realize wow literally this life is so short and we have to fix our eyes on jesus the author and the perfect of our faith he's the one who will help us endure and I had a friend tell me after, you know, Evan passed away, it was a pastor friend of ours, and he said he actually lost his baby, him and his wife lost their baby as well last year, and their little baby boy. And he said, it's not like it's forever until you're going to see that person again. It's really like, I'll see you in a minute, because literally this life goes so short. It's like, I'll see you in a minute. Like It's not like we're going to be here forever. And so... Our focus has to be on Jesus. Yes, rest with the Lord, heal and grieve. Otherwise, I've seen people go, 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 and they literally become so healthy and they hurt other people. And I actually even involved in spiritual abuse. So it is so important that you heal. And number two, it's so important that you do not give up on your God-given mission, purpose, and calling. You don't give up spending time with the Lord, like you keep going in that. And one thing that really encouraged me in the book of Acts is where Paul was talking about how the Holy Spirit warns him that in every city he's going to face trial and persecution and chains, that those things await him. But basically he was like, these things don't move me. He's going to continue to fulfill 
the work of the Lord, to continue going after Jesus and doing the things that Jesus called him to do. And so that's so encouraging to me. So you have to have this balance within those things and know that eternity is forever. And so it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. Can I just tell you if you feel it? Because there's times where I felt like it wasn't okay. Like if you feel like it is not okay to cry and to grieve, I want to tell you that it's okay and that emotions, healthy emotions with the Lord are normal. God created emotions. He created tears. We see grief throughout the Bible. But, you know, again, you got to make sure that you're taking that healthy road with the Lord and and involving accountability in your life and the right people too, because some people are not the right people. I learned that as well. Some people are not the right people to allow into some of those processes, but allow the right solid people who have history with the Lord to help you in those processes. Those who are sold out to Jesus and even people who have been through similar things who can really help you and show you, hey, I've been through this. I understand what you're walking through. Help mentor you and counsel you through those things. We will face trials. Jesus promised us that. But the difference between a non-Christian and a Christian is Christians have hope through those trials. Every person on this earth faces hard things, but thankfully we have Jesus through the trial. John chapter 16 verses 33 says, and this is Jesus talking, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus is the only one who can restore and comfort our soul. And I'm so thankful for the comfort of the Lord and just how near he has been in this whole process and how near he is to you. And so I just pray in Jesus' name that he comforts your heart. He heals you. He sets you free, whatever you're going through right now. And I'm so thankful for the comfort of the Holy Spirit and that he's right here. He's not a God that is far off. He is right here. So this whole process has given me a greater understanding of the reality of eternity and i promise you if you fix your eyes on jesus you will not regret it i choose to trust in jesus y'all no matter what the cost he is worth it he is worthy y'all comment your thoughts below i've missed y'all so please say hi in the chat i would love to just like reply to you guys and just say hi because i know it's been so long so guys thank you so much for watching this video god bless you guys and let's get this generation back to biblical truth all for the glory of jesus peace out